Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. You know you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Amen. Nah, I think they ought to write a song about that. <laughs> you just uh, join us. Stand up and worship in your house or sit there and clap and tap your toe. Be sure and let us know where you're tuning in from today, where you're worshiping with us from today. Be sure and share the post on your page, too. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design. And you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Let's all sing that. You can't be If your light don't shine, you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Okay, Yeah. 
shine. Hallelujah. Are you letting it shine this morning? Good morning, Pastor Jerry. And good morning to you, cowboys and cowgirls. Y'all doing good today? Amen. I've been telling y'all that, uh, that I could see you at home, hadn't I? Well, we thought maybe you'd like to see what we look like up here. You know, it's kind of hard preaching to empty seats, and Susie likes to take pictures, so, you know, this is what we're preaching to. But every once in a while, we look out there and see what you're doing, too. So you just better you better be dressed pretty good, anyways, when when you when you start to turn on your TV, because we got it we got an eye right into your living room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyway, are y'all ready for a great service today? Amen. Guess who's preaching? Pastor Jimmy. Amen. How many of you love Pastor Jimmy's preaching? I do for sure. We got we got several of the best preachers in the world in this church for a little church we're not doing too bad amen so we're looking for some mighty things coming up and we're going to get back to normal one day and we'll be giving you some information over the next few days or weeks of how we're going to reinstitute having church in the church amen, amen. so if y'all are looking forward to that don't go away because we're we're working on it okay so are y'all ready to hear some some good worship music well, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the day, and I just ask you to anoint this service, Father. I ask you just to touch folks at home. I ask you just to, to pour your spirit out on us today, Father. Lord, we want to learn more about you. We want to learn more about how to, how to serve you and how to witness to our friends and our neighbors, Father. And, Lord, we just ask you to stir us up in the spirit. And we ask you to pour your spirit out on us today, Father. And we just want you to have your way in our lives, Father. And I, I just pray that you'd anoint Brother Jimmy and, and, uh, and that everything he says will be straight from your mouth, Father. And it'll be stuff that we need to know in our lives. And, it, and we just want our lives to keep changing continuously uh, to be more like Jesus, Father. So we ask you to accomplish all of that today in our lives and in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. And be glad in it. 
and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Hey, Wayne, why don't you play that? That the Lord hath made. That the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad. Everybody, let's sing. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has I've got a river. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Open prison doors set the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Within my soul. Bring up a well and make me whole. Bring up a well and give to me that life abundantly. That life abundantly. Spring up a well. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah, we've entered his gates with thanksgiving. We said this is the day, and we've got the, the juices are flowing now. The Holy Spirit is moving in our hearts. Hallelujah, the joy is rising up. Oh yeah, we'll sing of his love. When my heart is heavy, when my soul is fixed with shame, when my mind is burdened, I will call upon your name. When the road I walk is easy, and the sunshine rules the day, when I feel you close beside me, I will call upon your name. I will dwell in your tabernacle. I will have a your wings on the rock that is higher than I. I will sing of your love, sing of your love, sing of your love. Seems all hope is lost. I will find the light to cling to in the shadow of the cross. Cause your love is never ending, and this small truth remains. There's salvation for everyone who calls upon your name. I will dwell in your tabernacle. Hallelujah. 
thank you, Jesus. And I will sing of your love, sing of your love, sing of your love. I will sing of your love, sing of your love, sing of your love. All right, let's sing it like we mean it. I will sing of your love, sing of your love, sing of your love. All right, great job, worship team today. Yeah, amen. We've been entering his gates with thanksgiving and singing of his love. Wow. Yes, ma'am, hallelujah. But, but guess what time it is now? I think it may be hug and howdy time. Hug and howdy time. Yay. All right, somebody hug somebody in your house there. You. And then we're getting ready to hug each other. Now we're going to do it online. Virtually. Virtually, of course. <laughs> So everybody type in a big capital H-O-W-D-Y. Uh, like the... A real big one. H-O-W. Kind of like the Y-M-C-A thing. Well, sort of, but I'm not really. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so after you type in howdy, don't hit send yet. Let's see the next picture. Well, my goodness, somebody's waving at us. It sure is. It looks like it might be uh, old Jim Ray out there in the middle of those flowers. He is outstanding in his field. He is. <laughs> Yeah, those are beautiful flowers. I love those yellow Texas flowers. My goodness. All right, so the next screen. Now, before you hit send, be sure and pick an emoji there on your phone or on your computer and, and send a wave or a, a music note or, or the one with the mask on or, or just send something that you'd like to send, the hearts or something. All right, so, well, looky there. We got some more people there. Hi, Crystal. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, so the next one. Tell everybody before you hit send, be sure and type in there and tell us where you're worshiping from. City, state, um, town, country, um, um, wherever, you're call wherever you're watching from today. And if you're not watching live, be sure and write it in later whenever you are watching because we like to see and, and it's um, fun to, to see where everybody's tuning in from. And be sure and... Um, um, you know, we have to try and, and to... Uh, oh, wait, we got one more. I right know, there. but we're having to, we have to try and stay connected with our family. And that picture of Jim Ray, you see him waving there. We went out and seen him the other day and we were social distancing. Yes. We were like 50 yards away from him said, and waving wave, at him. Wave big, Jim. And this one right here, this is Randy. Yeah. We That's stopped funny. by and got some barbecue yeah. a couple of weeks back so it's important that we stay connected so if you uh, think of someone call them up pray with them do whatever you need to do with them we uh, yeah. are going to be able to meet soon one of these days praise the lord thank hallelujah. you for that hallelujah it's getting closer but we thank you for praying. technology right now that's right so now um, after you hit send i mean yeah after you hit send now on the left of the comments you can hit the word share and then you can do it write a post and if you'll do that now then your friends can tune in with us and um the more people can have church with us today. And um, also, the people who don't have Facebook, I know you, you'd like to share it with everybody, but I know you hear the same thing I hear. I don't have Facebook. It's amazing how many people don't have Facebook, and that's okay. We, we've got them covered as well. Our um, videos are on our website at cowboysforjesus.com. And so uh, if you'll show that next screen for us there, dear. Thank you. you know, cowboysforjesus.com, and it'll be available tomorrow afternoon. And, um, and I think they show them on YouTube through that, through that website. Yeah, through that website. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we... Uh, Next page, please. Thank you. We kind of uh, <laughs> keep track of what uh, is happening since we're doing live video. And, and, and the Lord has amazing, amazingly blessed us with technology so we can reach out and touch more people. Uh, more people than what comes into this congregation right now. So the Lord has a, a, a lot of ways to be able to minister to people. Mm -hmm. We had over 1,200 views last Sunday of last Sunday service. We had 23 shares and uh, 379 comments. We had 69 likes, loves, and smiles. Yeah. So, so people a, are hearing God's word through this church. 
And so we're grateful for that. So as the service is going along, you can hit the, the thumbs up, the blue one, or the heart, it's red, and the, there's a laughy one, too, if something funny happens. Um, so just be sure and um, just communicate with us as you're, as you're going through the service. Now I want to mention last Wednesday service. On a Wednesday night, we have 20, 30 people here uh, when we can meet in the sanctuary. 700 people checked into that service. Checked into that Thank service. You, Lord. And I'm going to tell you, I was here for that service. And it was an amazing message. And I pray that you will take time to go back and find last Wednesday's service and listen to it. If you're going through anything right now, hmm, I think we all are. That message is perfect for us. It was so good for every area of our lives. It was just very concise, very, very complete, just really wonderful. 15 people shared that one. We had 129 people comment and 38 people going love and likes and smileys and stuff. So we just, um, that's not for us. That's, that's the congregation talking to each other and, and encouraging the church too. And so um, be sure and reach out. Stay connected to the Cowboys for Jesus family. So you can call them, send them a text, mail a letter, do an email, um, however you want to reach out. But get your directory out or, or look online and see who's commenting and say, you know, I'm going to send them a message this week. So I was reading through the scriptures this week, and I got to Proverbs 17, and there's three scriptures, three verses in there that really captured my heart. Number nine, verse nine says, love prospers when fault is forgiven. And I just thought, wow, prospers when fault is forgiven. And number 17 says, a friend loves at all times. And then number 22 said, a cheerful heart is good medicine. And I thought, good medicine, we need some good medicine. Well, here's some good medicine. You can send a picture of a smiley face to somebody. Do you all see the smiley face in that picture? Right there in the middle of that basket. I took that picture. I thought, look at that. That's a smiling basket. <laughs> so see what the Lord shows you around you and take pictures of it and then send it to your friends. All right, so this week we've got some, other fun, some more good medicine for you. Let's see what the next one is. All right, so I'll read it to you. Now this is kind of a funny for you. Yesterday... My husband thought he saw a cockroach in the kitchen. He sprayed everything down, and he cleaned thoroughly. Today, I'm putting the cockroach in the bathroom. <laughs> now, that's funny right there. Yeah, that's funny. All right, so I saw another little thing this week, and it was just so cute. This little guy told his daddy that he wanted to learn how to train his puppy. And his daddy responded, well, son, there's all kinds of dog training videos on YouTube. This is the little boy showing the little puppy all those videos. <laughs> now that's the way you train your little puppy these days. Hallelujah. Well, we like to um, also mention each week um, the different ministries that are available and that reach out into our community then serve our community and our church through Cowboys for Jesus. And the, the one we're going to mention this week, instead of two, we're going to mention one, and it's the missions ministry. And the director is Paula Key, and that's Pastor Dennis's wife. But right now we're just going to mention them because yesterday, um, Pastor Dennis and Paula, and also Bucky, our guitar player who is missing, and his wife Carolyn, they are part of the Billy Graham Rapid Response Teams, and they have been deployed. And yesterday they both left, and um, they, won't be, they will be serving starting today at 3 o'clock until next Sunday at 1 o'clock in their respective areas. And you want to tell them where they're going and why? You know, uh, in the uh, Billy Graham uh, Rapid Response uh, Team deployment, the ministry uh, that's there, you know, they send people when, when disasters happen. And so they've been deployed. Uh, Pastor Dennis and, and Paul have been deployed to Laurel, Mississippi. And uh, Bucky and Carolyn have been deployed to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And the reason was because of the tornadoes that went through, the devastating tornadoes that went through there last week. And so we're grateful for uh, Cowboys for Jesus and, and the missions that we uh, have here. And we're thankful for uh, Pastor Dennis and Paula and Bucky and Carolyn answering that call as missionaries to there. You know, when things like that happen, you know, there's, there's devastation. People uh, need hope and encouragement, need to hear the Word of God, you know. And so they've deployed, and we want to pray for them just a second before we continue. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for... Uh, Pastor Dennis and Paul, and we thank you for uh, Bucky and Carolyn. We thank you for their hearts for your yes. people, Lord. You, Lord. Lord, we thank you that they went 
to these areas, Lord, where there's hope is needed and encouragement is needed. And, Lord, we just ask that you uh, could just protect them where they are. Lord, you bless them. You bring people to them, Lord, so they can hear about Jesus. Let them be the hands and feet of Jesus, Lord. This is what missions is about. So, Lord, we thank you for them answering that call. And we just ask that you allow them to return safely back to us when their work is done. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, um, if your house got blown away in a tornado or you lost your business, and, and even in a pandemic, too, I mean, just, just think how devastating that is. And what if Bucky and Carolyn showed up at your doorstep? Or what if Paula and, and Pastor Dennis showed up at your doorstep? Wouldn't you be blessed? Wow. They, God has picked some really great people to be in that mission. Well, I want to let you know that um, we are preparing to have church again right here in this building. And so we've been doing some sprucing up. We mentioned it last week. I'm going to show you some of the sprucing up we did. All right, so right there, that's Elizabeth. She's just painting there in the men's room. You're not even going to recognize the men's room once you get done. Now, so let's, now, so we added a little, little something to it. So we were, just weren't done. So we just add a little bit more. Now it's all done. Now it's all spruced up. Now we've got a lot of things done that Elizabeth has come through and just put her final touches on and just has really blessed this church. And it's elizabeth fied is what I'm calling it. And that means that it's fantastic. And we thank Elizabeth for all of her efforts. Hallelujah. Now, on uh, Mother's Day, Sunday, May 10th, Pastor, Pastor Jimmy will be preaching that day. It's Mother's Day, and we're going to be outside. We're going to have drive-in church and uh, have an outdoor stage and social distancing and, and wear a mask. And so we're looking forward to that time, and Pastor Jimmy will uh, tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah. All right, family. What time is it? All right. It's cheerful giving time. Hallelujah. It is cheerful giving time. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, when we, when we uh, aren't able to meet here as a congregation over the, the last month and a half, uh, we uh, know that you still want to honor God with your tithes and your offerings, so we want to give you that opportunity, and we set up ways for you to do that uh, online, uh, Elizabeth has, and, and uh, you can go to uh, our website and, and donate there, or you can uh, mail it into the church, or you can drop it by, and we thank you for that. So I want to uh, pray uh, here, so if you would just bow your heads with me. Second Corinthians. Chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, reads this point. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as his heart has decided in his heart, not reluctant or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I also want to read Malachi. Chapter three. Let's see if you help me here. Malachi, verse... 3, chapter 10, and it reads, <laughs> chapter 10. verse 10, it reads, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Father, I thank you for those that give to this church, and uh, Lord, I thank you for the offerings that we do receive so we can support our missions and we can support things that go on so we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we thank you for those that uh, uh, give their tithes and off offerings faithfully to this church, Lord. I would ask that you would bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And um. In 2 Corinthians 9, if you'll read 1 through um, 15, or start at 6 and read through 15. I was reading that this week, and just the Lord was just really ministering to me about, about the giving. And, you know, he's the one that provides the seed, and he's the one that makes the increase, too. And so that was really a good read. So 9 through uh, 15, I think, are the verses there. So you can give online. It's, it's um, securely um, set up so you can just make your donation with your credit card from your phone, from your home, uh, from your computer. And, um, and I'm sure you could probably set it up where it does it automatically each month. Um, so here's where, you, um, here's where you do that. Go to our website, cowboysforjesus.com, and on the very front page where that blue area is pointing to that little box, it says, Donate Now. If you click on that one time, it'll pull up a screen, and you can fill out your information and send it in securely, and it'll come right to the church. And so we're grateful um, that people, that Elizabeth set that up for us and that we can do things that way. And if you'd like to just write out your check, just write it out like you normally do, but send it in an envelope and put it in the mailbox instead of the bucket that, slide, that comes by the, in the pew. So we thank you all. That's the announcements for this week. We look forward to having church today with Pastor Jimmy's message, and, and um, we're going to worship some more. Hallelujah.
How about our worship team? Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Bucky. And Bucky's doing a great job there in um, Chattanooga. Be sure and keep them in your prayers this week. Thank you, Lord. In Ephesians 3 and 17, 18, and 19, it talks about how deep and, and how wide and how great is the love for us, of the Lord for us. And Zephaniah 3 and 17 also talks about how the Lord sings over us and how he delights in you. Oh, how he delights in us. And we sing your praises, Lord.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the ways that you love us. The ways that you amaze us. Can't even walk without your hope. 
Cause I can't even walk without you holding my hand I thought that I could do a lot on my own I thought I could do it all along. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Because I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Amen. Amen. We need you, Lord, every hour. Amen. Direct every one of our steps. Believe in the blood that was poured out 
help me this heavenly And God sent His Son to you and me He gave the flesh to set us free That's what I believe He healed the sick and He raised the dead and drove demons out with what He said That's what I believe and I believe in the cross that you died upon I believe in the grave that you That was poured out for me this I believe. All right, Tom, can you play that for us? Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you'll welcome, help me welcome our very own Pastor Jimmy Darnell. Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. Okay. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Well, all of you out there in your living rooms and dens look so beautiful. You ladies all have your hair done, had nice robes on. What a nice looking congregation, praise God. Well, we're looking forward to soon opening the church building up again to meet, but we're going to take some baby steps getting there. This coming Wednesday night, Pastor Greg will do the teaching into the camera. Next Sunday, May the 3rd, I will teach again into the camera. And on Wednesday night of May the 6th, I'll teach you to the camera. That'll be our last three services where we're actually just preaching to a camera. On the 10th, we have a big day. We're having a in the parking lot, uh, outdoor service, cowboy roundup. Everyone uh, is to stay in their vehicles, but at least we can wave at each other, open our windows up, wave, shout hallelujah to one another, and... Uh, if the worship team is singing under the anointing, you can say amen by honking your horn. When Dennis gets up to preach on the stage, if he gets to preaching good like he did the other night, you can say amen by honking your horn. Praise God. It's going to be a fun day. So invite your friends. Come on in your truck. Come on in your vehicle. And uh, join us in the parking lot for a, a great Cowboy Roundup service. Praise God. And then we hope after that to be open up then the church on Wednesday night. Where we can all come together who would like to come on Wednesday night. Those that don't feel good about it yet, stay home and watch it on live stream. But we'll hope to open the church up uh, on Wednesday nights and then soon on Sunday mornings. So th those are the steps that we're going to take. We're trying to be a little cautious to take these baby steps uh, so that we'll all be safe and uh, with this wicked virus. Let's pray now. You know, the thought came to me this week. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. That means this virus is an invader. It's coming to his, his earth. It's an invader and a trespasser. 
So we're going to stand against it this morning and pray for the ending of this thing very, very quickly. Father, we thank you now in the wonderful name of Jesus that we come and talk to you as a good daddy. You're a good, good, good father. And Lord, we just thank you that, that uh, you said on earth as it is in heaven. That's where we're to pray. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's no virus in heaven. So we pray on earth as it is in heaven. We rebuke this invader who's come into your earth. We rebuke it. We stand against it. We say, desist and die and get out of the Lord's earth in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray, God, for America and around the world, Lord, that, that the economy can be opened up again. People need to work, Lord. People need to earn a living. Lord, we need to meet together as churches again. We need to, we need to receive offerings and tithes so that we can bless missionaries. They need, missionaries, Lord, are out there that are needing support around the world, God. We're, we're praying, God, that all of this will happen quickly as this virus dies and leaves the earth that you made in Jesus' name. Bless us today in the teaching and preaching of the Word of God. But we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For about four months now, I've been preaching from the basic theme of Hebrews 13 8, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Simply meaning that what He said, He says. What He did, He does. Who He was, He is. And so we're going to look at a really neat story this morning that's going to tell us a lot about who He is, some powerful things that he did, and some mighty things that he said. So let's turn to the uh, 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 14, and verse 21. Now you will notice immediately the story that we're fixing to read. It, it, it follows immediately on the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. The moment that finished... This story takes place. So we start reading in verse 21. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. And then he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, Jesus was there alone. But the boat by this time was many furlongs distant from the land. Beaten by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Meaning the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. The fourth watch was three to six in the mornings. Really the darkest hours of the night. Around three o'clock in the morning to six as we near daylight. So in the fourth watch, he came walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately he spoke to them, saying, Take heart. Be of good courage. It is I. Have no fear. And now we read from Mark's gospel. We get a little bit of a different slant on this, on this gospel. Mark 6. Verse 44, and those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. And immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making Headway painfully, for the wind was contrary. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and he meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him, and they were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, have no fear. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astonished, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. It says that the disciples out there on the sea were facing contrary winds. The New American Standard Bible says they were straining at the oars 
as they pulled into those contrary winds. The Revised Standard Version that I read from says they were making headway painfully. Literally, the Greek says they were harassed in rowing because of the contrary winds. And I think we often find that the winds of life are contrary to us. Sometimes we feel like we're making really slow progress as we're going into strong winds. Some, with our finances, maybe we feel like we've been making a little bit of progress, and then all of a sudden, here comes a strong wind, another big wave comes up and almost sinks our boat, and here we're back to where we were. Or maybe in our family, we feel like we've been making a little bit of headway here and there, a little bit slowly, but we're getting there, and then one of our children becomes contrary. And tough times. Or maybe in our career, uh, we're about midlife, and we think, man, we should be further along by now. It's been so, progress has been so slow. Or even against this virus, we think, oh Lord, it's, it's taken a while. It seems like progress is so slow as we head into these contrary winds. Uh, you know, there's some reasons that we face contrary winds in life. First of all, there's a devil. And he hates God and he hates God's kids. And he resists us as we seek to do the will of God in life. And then second, we live in a sin-filled, sickness-filled world. And the world that we live in now, quite honestly, is worse than the world a thousand years ago because of the accumulative effects of sin. More and more sin has been released in the universe, and, and therefore there's more resistance. Uh, this sin-filled world is filled with a fallen race who have wicked sin natures. And there's a lot more of this fallen race in the earth today than there were uh, only a little over 100 years ago. At the turn of the 19th century, about 1800, we reached our first billion in population. By 1927, we reached our second billion. And today, we are pressing in on 8 billion people on planet Earth. That's 8 billion people, all who have fallen sin natures. And you put all that together, and you have the makings of contrary winds in this world. But, you know, this story today is so encouraging. It tells us we can endure and overcome the contrary winds of life with Jesus on our side. Amen? Praise God. So let's look at the story in a little bit of detail. First of all, notice his purpose. It said he made them get into the boat. And he told them to go across to the other side and meet me at Bethsaida. So that was his will. It was not their plan. It was his plan. He sent them. And you know, as you're going through life and in the midst of life's missions, it's really good to know that you were sent and didn't just went. Or say it another way, when your back is up against the wall, you better know about your call. I think about Paul and Barnabas. Let's go to Acts 13. I want to just show you a little bit of that story. Acts 13. These are our first two missionaries that are going to be sent out from the <coughs> church at Antioch. And it says in Acts 13, verse 2, While they were worshiping or ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart from me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. And verse 4, So being sent by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. From there they sailed to Cyprus. Notice that they were sent by the local church. The local church laid hands on them and sent them on this first missionary journey. It also says they were sent by the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you, it's good for them to know that they were sent because they came up against some really contrary winds on that first missionary journey. They got run out of several towns. They just kicked them out of, out of the towns. And we're told that at Lystra, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, threw him on the garbage dump, supposing that he was dead. But it also says in the next verse, that the church gathered around him and they began to pray and he got up and went back into the town. Now, that, a lot of times we just take, we read that, oh, okay, listen. Do you know what someone looked like after they'd been stoned? They were taking goose egg sized stones 
and throwing it at the Apostle Paul, his skull would have been crushed and his, bone, his brains beginning to come out between his eyes. But both shoulders would have been knocked out of joint. His vertebrae in the back would have been broken. His legs would have been broken. This man is just a pulp of flesh after the stoning. And they drag him out thinking he's dead. And the disciples gathered around him and began to pray. Wouldn't you love to have been there? I mean, the skull begins to come back together. The brain gets back in its right place. His shoulders begin to come back into joint. Vertebrae begin to be healed. His legs are healed. And he gets up. And runs away. No, no. He goes back into the town. Amazing guy, huh? Amazing man. Praise God. But you see, if they hadn't known they were sent, if they had just went, man, I don't know how could they could have faced those contrary winds, but they were sent, and therefore they prevailed. Now, here's, here's a thought. It's, look at this. We're talking about his purpose. He made them get into the boat. It was his will. So we know they're in the will of God, even though they're facing these contrary winds. So what we're saying is, resistance does not mean that you are outside of the will of God. On the contrary, it may mean that you are in His will, praise God. You know, you, you have a job, and you say, I know God gave me this job. But now, I'm beginning to face resistance in the management Contrary winds are beginning to blow. I guess maybe I need to, maybe I need to, I'm outside of God's will. Maybe I need to change jobs. Probably not. Or you get married to this wonderful lady. You're so much in love and, and then friction begins to happen. Contrary winds begin to blow and you begin to think, hmm, did I really marry the right woman? Maybe I need to find another wife. No. It may mean that you are in the will of God. Or you're a pastor of a church and just things are rolling along good, the church is growing, and then you begin to get resistance. Contrary winds begin to blow. The deacons begin to give you a hassle. You think, well, maybe this is not God's will for me to be at this church. Maybe I need to move on. Probably not. It just may mean you are in the will of God. So what I say when that happens, when he's told you to get in the boat, go across the other side, I'll meet you at Bethsaida. I think what I'd do, just keep on rowing, amen? Just keep your head right into the wind and keep on rowing, even though the winds are contrary. Second truth, notice his prayer. Now in the story we see that Jesus stayed on the mountain to pray. He sent them in the boat on across the sea, but he stayed on the mountain to pray. So, well, Brother Jimmy, what was he praying about? I don't know. Maybe a lot of things. I know one thing he was praying about. He was praying about this thing that happened after the feeding of the 5,000. It says in the book of John that when he fed those 15,000, 20,000 people with five biscuits and two sardines, that the people decided we will make him king. And you think about this. Here you have a king now leading your armies, and you don't have to have a supply train. You don't have to have field uh, kitchens. You don't have to have rations. You don't have to have any of that. You've got a general who can make food on the spot for your army. Let's follow him. Defeat the Romans. Throw them out of Judea and be independent. He knows that's a wrong concept of the kingdom. He knows that's off, that's off the wall. And so now he's, just, he's retired into the mountains to pray. But I, I know else, what else he was praying about. It says that he was watching them. Did you notice when we read he was watching them out there on the sea? He was watching them in the moonlight as they're struggling against these contrary winds and the waves are, are getting bigger. And you can just know that he's praying for his disciples. He's praying, Father, cause the Holy Spirit to strengthen them. Cause him to put strength into their arms and their shoulders as they strain at the oars. Cause them to take courage that they're not going to sink. I sent them over there, Father. Cause them to have hope. And courage. He is, Jesus is praying for them. And so that brings us to Christ the intercessor. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 23. This is one of the neat little paragraphs in scripture right here. 
It says, The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. He's talking about the former high priests in the nation of Israel. And we know from history there were 84 high priests. But none of them could continue in the office because they kept what? They kept dying. But he holds his priesthood permanently or forever because he lives forever. Praise God. Therefore, he is able to... To save unto the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Oh, I love that. Christ the intercessor. Jesus, our high priest, at the throne of the Father, making intercession, making prayers for us. And it says that, that because he lives forever, he's able to save Unto the uttermost. Now we know what that word save is. We talked about it a dozen times. It's the, it's the Greek verb sozo. And it means more than just forgive. He's able to forgive, heal, deliver, protect, make whole unto the uttermost. And that, the uttermost means completely and forever. Completely, thoroughly, and forever. So put that together. He's able to heal, deliver, make whole. Completely and forever. Those who call upon his name because he's there before the throne of the Father making intercession for us. You know, in the history of the church, there have been some great men and women of prayer. I wish we had time to just talk about some of the great intercessors down through history. But let me say this. No one could ever pray like Jesus did. No one could pray like him. Oh my you know, I, I love it when people say, Brother Jimmy, we're praying for you. I'll take all the prayers I can get. We're praying for you. I, I had a, a, two widows in the church in San Marcos when we, er, we started. I led both of them to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were both Baptist ladies. Led them both in the Baptist, into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they, they were very close to me down through, down through the years. And they prayed for me all the time. I mean, they were great prayers. They spent hours in their session. Those ladies could play a black wall white. I mean, they just, they got after it. And, uh, and I, I appreciate their prayers. But you know, more important than our prayers to him are his prayers for us at the throne of God. Jesus is praying for you this morning. How about that? Wow. And so, I was thinking about that. You know, maybe he's praying to the Father. He's saying, Father, Jimmy's struggling over this passage of scripture that he wants to teach him. He can't seem to get the, the, the picture or the interpretation. Send the Holy Spirit to shed some light on it. Send the Holy Spirit to give him revelation concerning what he's struggling over. Or, Father, Billy, he's working hard, but he's just not making enough money to get by. Send the Holy Spirit to give him a creative idea. And if he will market that idea, it'll make him a millionaire. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's what, that's just Jesus praying for us. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad he's praying for you this morning? Aren't you glad that he's the great intercessor? Praise the Lord. He was praying for them. He was, he was seeing them out there on, on the sea. He has us in mind. He has us on his heart. And he was praying for them. And then third, not only <clears throat> his purpose and his prayer, but notice his power. It says that he was walking on the sea. Now, when I read that, it reminds me of the story about, you know, the, the Baptist preacher, the Pentecostal preacher, and the Catholic priest who were all in the boat on the lake fishing. The boat was anchored, and they're sitting there fishing. And the Baptist says, you know, I'm saved. I'm born again. My sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Jesus walked on water. I'm going to walk on the water. And so he steps out of the boat to walk on water. Pew! He sinks. He comes up dog paddling. The Pentecostal says, well... I'm saved, I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, and, uh, but I also have the Holy Ghost. I can walk on water like Jesus did. He gets out of the boat, woo, he sinks, he's dog paddling. Then the Catholic priest gets out of the boat and just begins to walk right on across the lake, and he's just saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, Hail Mary, full of grace, going right on across the, the, the lake, and then they hear him say, Father, I think maybe I have sinned. I should have told him where the stumps are. But Jesus wasn't walking on any stumps. He's actually walking on the sea. Praise God. 
And, and the, the, the significance of that this morning is that uh, it's, it's more than just historical fact. We know Jesus walked on the water. It tells us a lot about who he was. But it's more than a historical fact. It, it, it says to us that he's walking above the circumstances. He's walking on the top of the storm, praise God. He's above the resistance, praise the Lord. He was walking on the sea. In other words, all those waves and problems that were under his feet. Praise God. Ephesians. Chapter 1. Beginning in verse 20. I'm going to break in, into the middle of this prayer. Pauline prayer. He's talking about his great power. He said, which he accomplished in Christ. It's verse 20. When he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And then you jump over to chapter 2 and it says, and he raised us up with him. The New Testament teaches that our old Adamic man died on the cross with Jesus. And we were raised with him as new creation beings, praise God. So he has raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now Jesus is seated in the heavenlies and everything is under his feet. And we are seated with him. Then where are those things? They're also under our feet, all the storms, all the contrary winds, all the pressures, all of the problems, they're under our feet, just as they are under Jesus' feet. So praise God, if Jesus is walking on the sea, he's walking above the problems, he's walking above all of the storms, he can take us by the hand, amen? And we can walk on water, praise God. We can walk with him living above. All of these storms of life. It's good when we learn that heavenly perspective. It's good just to be able to, to say, I'm seated with Christ and I'm not in the middle of all that mess. I'm looking down on it. I've got the victory over it because I am seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Praise God. And then, fourth, His presence. Now, can you just see these disciples? They're straining at the oars. The waves are getting bigger. And you can just hear them say, man, this is tough. This is tough. I wish Jesus would come. Jesus would help us. And then, all of a sudden, in the fourth watch of the night, here comes Jesus walking on the water. And when they see him, what do they say? Woo! It's a ghost! It's a ghost. Sometimes, he comes to us in ways that we don't expect. We've all heard the story, I think, about the man who's in Alaska in the Arctic and the snowstorm is, is, is raging and he's freezing to death and he cries out to the Lord, Lord, save me. And the Lord says, I'll save you. And a little while later, here comes a, a dog sled team by. And the man says, man, it's a blizzard out there. Get on. Get on board. We're going to Nome. And he says, oh, no, no, no. The Lord's going to save me. He told me he would rescue me. So the dog team goes on. A little while later, a helicopter comes down, lands right down by him and says, man, there's a terrible storm out there. Jump in. We, we'll get you out of here. You're going to die out here. He says, no, the Lord promised me that he was going to rescue me. The helicopter goes on. Well, the fellow freezes to death. He dies, goes to heaven. And he says, Lord, you told me that you were going to rescue me. He said, yeah, I sent a dog t sled team and I sent a helicopter. What more do you want me to do? Sometimes he comes to us in ways that we don't expect. Like praying for revival. Praying for revival. And he shows up in a different way than we were expecting. It doesn't fit our traditional mold. I remember the church that I grew up, grew up in, we used to sing, the, sing that old hymn, Lord, send the old-time power, the Pentecostal power, that sinners be converted and thy name glorified. I don't think we knew what we were singing. If we'd have been singing that 
and someone all of a sudden, the power of God come on, they begin to shake and fall on the floor, speaking in tongues, I tell you what we'd have probably said, Woo, it's a ghost! It's a demon! He sometimes comes in ways that don't fit our traditional molds. But Jesus, it is Jesus. He's not a ghost. It's Jesus. And He says to them, don't be afraid. Take heart. It is I. I'm here. It's my presence. Praise God. I, 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 I know we all love the presence of the Lord. Let me, let me read to you one of the great passages in the Bible about His presence. Exodus 33. Verses 14 through 16. Now this is the Lord speaking, verse 14. And he said, he's talking to Moses, and he said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. And Moses said to him, if thy presence will not go with me, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in thy sight, I and thy people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct or separate, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? Moses understood it. He said, it's your presence that makes us distinct. It's your presence that separates us from all the rest of the people of the world. And if you don't go with us, Lord, we don't want to go. We love His presence. Amen. I love the fact that He's omnipresent. That means simply He's everywhere. I'm, I'm glad I, I can see Him in the birds and the flowers and the trees. I see Him everywhere in the creation. He is all around us. He is omnipresent. But also I love His indwelling presence. Not only is He everywhere... He's in us who've been born again. He's living on the inside of us. Jesus is in us, praise God. But I also love not only His omnipresence and His indwelling presence, I love His manifest presence. Oh my, when, when He just begins to manifest His glory and manifest, it's, it's simply when the, the supernatural begins to break forth into the realm of the natural and we can actually feel Him and, and touch Him. I, you know, I don't have to feel God to know that He's in me and with me, but I love to feel Him. <laughs> I love to feel His presence, praise God. And so He says to these disciples, so afraid, so full of fear, out there on the waves, a boat that's about to sink, He says, it's I, it is I, it's my presence. You don't have to worry about anything, praise God. And then that brings us to the last thought. And, and this one I never had seen until I was beginning to study this story in detail for today. Our pitiful understanding. Did you catch that last verse in the Mark passage, Mark 6, 52? The King James says, They considered not the miracle of the loaves. Here they are. All out there, out there, they're so afraid, they're so distressed, so worried, straining at the oars. And they considered not the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, praise God. It says in the New American Standard, they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves and the fishes. Now, think about this. Here they are, they're so upset about these contrary winds and this storm, and Jesus has just fed 15 or 20,000 people with five biscuits and two sardines. I believe if he can do that, he can take care of the winds that's facing them, right? But see, they didn't consider. They didn't get any insight from what had just happened. Uh, it's the same way with Israel. You remember, they came to the Red Sea, the Egyptian army is on their trail, going to kill them all. And what does God do? He opens up the Red Sea, and they go out through on dry ground with two walls, of, a wall of water on each side. And then that Egyptian army rushes into there and the, the water comes back and, and drowns a whole Egyptian army. How many of you know that's a big deal? Three days later, they're in the wilderness of Shur and there's no water. And they come to the bitter waters of Mara and they're murmuring and griping and complaining. Why? They did not consider the miracle of the Red Sea. They didn't gain any insight from the miracle that happened at the Red Sea. And, you know, I, I read that, man, I, I get kind of mad at the disciples. You guys didn't get it. Why didn't you get it? Or to those Israelis, you guys didn't get it. And then I think, oh, my, how about us? Sometimes God does something really great for us, amen? Something powerful. Two weeks later, we're facing contrary winds, and we're all worried and stressed out. Oh, how are we going to get out of this? How is this going to work out? What's going to happen? What? We considered not 
the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. We need to remember the things he's done for us in the past. Because it will give us confidence in facing contrary winds in the present. And it will give us hope for the future. They considered not the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. Well, aren't you glad that with Jesus we can overcome the contrary winds of life? We can overcome all of life's problems and stresses. Everything that comes against us. Everything that resists us. We can overcome it because Jesus is with us. Amen. His presence is is with us. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you this morning that we don't have to face the contrary winds of life alone, but that we have Jesus with us. And when he sends us across the lake, we know that's his will. We know we're going to get there, even though we face winds of resistance. We just thank you this morning, and we praise you and bless you for Jesus, our Savior, and our Redeemer, and our Healer, the one who can walk on water, the one who can take us by the hand and cause us to walk above the storms and the difficulties of life. We're so thankful for him today. Lord, help us to always remember, every time you do something good for us, help us to remember it. So that when the winds come in the present, we can overcome and we can have hope for the future. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Here comes the team. Pastor Jimmy, great message for each and every one of us. Let us forget what the Lord has done. And let it remind us and give us courage and, and hope as we go through the things in the future. But also what you just said there. They didn't gain any insight. They didn't, they didn't learn anything from what God had done for them. Just right there had done that. And this song is all about that. I need to have a change of heart. I need to not have a hardened heart. And, and so um, we thank you, Lord, that, that you come in and you change our heart. And you have grace for us. And, and he didn't just keep walking past them on the water. He's, he turned around he said, and he had compassion on them. I'm so grateful for the kindness of God. Thank you, Lord. It's the kindness of God that brings people to repentance and to their knees. Amen.
song It would take a change to heart You know where I've been You've seen what I've done You know all my faults Each and every one but still you chose to love me Now that was your plan And this is the reason I'm not the same man You changed my heart Then you changed my mind You gave me something I couldn't leave behind You knew Right from the start It would take a change Play the chorus one more time one song, a toe tapper, a hand clapper to send this on home with. I know you're already home, but to, to dismiss church. How about that? Oh, do Lord. Oh, do Lord. Oh, do remember me.
You know, some songs are uh, are really fun and snappy, and, and, and we like to sing them. But, you know, sometimes these songs get a little ridiculous at times. I mean, we're singing here, Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. And he promised how many times, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll, I'll abide with you always. I mean, he's there. He says, I'll, <laughs> Nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And here we're singing, do, Lord, do, Lord, do remember me, you know. Doesn't that seem kind of silly? But it's still a neat song, amen? So anyway, uh, I really enjoyed that sermon, Pastor Jimmy, and, and it's so good that I can remember that a long time ago, you know, somebody, somebody said, how are you doing? And I said, well, I'm doing all right under the circumstances. And they said, what are you doing under the circumstances? So this morning, Brother Jimmy's told us and reminded us that we are above our circumstances and we don't have to walk under them. Amen? So thank you, Brother Jimmy. I appreciate that. So how many of y'all glad you came to church this morning? Amen? Well, let's pray and ask God to bless the Word. Father, I thank you for the Word this morning. I thank you for Brother Jimmy. I thank you for our worship team. And Lord, I just ask you to just continue to pour your anointing out on, on this body and on these folks. And Lord, just touch them in their homes right where they are today, right now. And just minister to them and let them know that you will never leave them or forsake them. And they don't have to walk under any circumstances, Father, because you're above it all. And I just ask you to help us to keep these things in our mind and hide them in our hearts and and Lord, just let us get closer and closer to you, because I know you can't get any closer to us, because you live within us, and you inhabit our praises, and you minister to us day and night, Father. So Lord, just keep us aware, like Jim, Brother Jimmy said, you know, it's, it's good to feel your presence, but Lord, we know you're there anyway, because you said you were, Father. You said you live in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, just give us a great week and bring us back Wednesday evening to hear another good message. And, Lord, bless the people where they are right now. In Jesus' name, amen. How do you know when you've been to a cowboy church? When the preacher says, y'all come back now, you hear? Amen.